Hello, amateur anime reviews. Okay, uh, today I have Steam Boy. Uh, the movie Steam Boy was uh, director Kashura Otomo's follow up to Akira. The movie was based on an original story and it took him several years to complete. Uh, it was released in the States around 2005 or so. And it was mostly shown, I believe, in like art houses and, and, and places like that. And it really wasn't as successful in the USA as some people thought uh, thought it could have been, or you know, or would have wished to. Uh, but I think it is a very worthy addition to uh, Otuma's filmmaking resume. The story is set in England during the year 1866, and it concerns a boy named Ray Steen. His father and his grandfather have gone to America to work. Uh, both the elder Steens are inventors, and Ray himself also displays some of their ingenuity and creativity. Uh, his family kind of survives on kind of modest means, but you know, Ray is still a, a young man full of like humor and pluck and initiative and things like that. Uh, one day, Ray comes home and receives a package from his grandfather. The package is a uh, invention, uh, the steam ball, which seems to be able to generate an unlimited amount of steam energy. And almost immediately, two men from the O'Hara Foundation show up at Ray's door. Uh, the O'Hara Foundation is a company that Ray's father and Ray's grandfather were working for. And the two men want the steam ball back, but because Ray's grandfather... Uh, told him not to give the invention to anyone except a man from the government named um, Mr. Stevenson. Uh, Ray runs off. There's like a big chase scene. Eventually, Ray does meet Mr. Stevenson. Um, but Ray is eventually captured by the Foundation. Turns out Ray f Ray's father is sort of kind of behind the capture. Uh, he wants um, Ray to see all the great work he's been doing. He's still working for the O'Hare uh, company, uh, but he seems to be kind of a changed man. And at this point, we also meet Scarlet. She's kind of the heir to the Foundation uh, family fortune. She's kind of spoiled. It has this entitled attitude, and she seems to have the the run of the place. Uh, most of the adults do appear to kind of like defer to her. Uh, I think Ray is like the only guy who, the only person who actually talks back to her. Um, but anyway, uh, Ray's father wants the steam ball back because he has his own plans. There's going to be this big gala celebration. There's going to be heads of states and foreign dignitaries there. And, um, you know, he wants to show what he can do. And you know, there's going to be, there's in the story, you know, there's many parties going at each other. Everybody's got a different agenda concerning the Steve Ball. And they all compete with, every, with, every, uh, with each other. And everything pretty much comes to head at the gala. And it just erupts. And it's big and it's spectacular. And it's chaos. And just all sorts of crazy big epic things happen uh, one interesting aspect I found of the film is just the sort of kind of where the various um, sources of conflict um, come in you you have Gray's grandfather who seems to believe that there's you know just some technology that's too dangerous for mankind uh, Ray's dad thinks that well you know science belongs to everybody and it can inspire mankind and mankind can do great things with science and technology it doesn't matter where it came from or whatever else is going on uh, the O'Hara Foundation obviously believes that since you know it's it's their money that provided the resources to create this technology, uh, they own the inv the invention and they can do whatever they want with it to make money. And uh, Mr. Stevenson, for the government, you know, seems kind of goes along. I mean, he seems like a nice man, but he seems like you know the government sh should control such things for the greater good. And at various points in the story, you know, Ray is kind of torn between all of these different types of view. Um, the animation in this film is top notch. The art direction uh, can't be lauded enough. I think everything from the design of the characters to the landscapes and the buildings of the uh, 19th century England are really excellent. The backgrounds are really lush. They're very detailed. They help create a you know real sense of a inhabitable world that the characters are a part of. And and unlike you know some other animated films where the lead characters just kind of act on top of if, if you know what I mean um, once again with the animation the body language and the facial expressions of the protagonist for the most part are really appropriate uh, the look of the different gadgets and inventions are just a real joy to behold and you know everything really combines to create a world that you know you as a viewer um, 
feel a part of. Uh, one thing is when I watched a movie, I watched the uh, Japanese. I watched it in the original Japanese language with the subtitles, and I'm a little bit glad that I did. the uh, The English voice actors are Anna Paquin, uh, Alfred Molina, and Patrick Stewart. And when I watched uh, when I watched some of the um, uh, special features and, and other things like that, uh, and watch some of the other scenes in English. Um, I have to say, as much as I like Patrick Stewart, and I think Patrick Stewart is great, I really don't think he was the right choice for um, the voice of the grandfather. You know, the grandfather is supposed to be this old, frail man that may or may not be a little crazy, and um, and that's just not. What you think of when you think of Patrick Stewart? You know, I'm, you know, I'm hearing Patrick Stewart's uh, voice come out of this character, and it took me out of the out of the uh, out of the film for a second because it's like, you know, he's Patrick Stewart. He's I, I'm Patrick Stewart. You know what I mean? He's he doesn't sound old and frail, and the character's supposed to be old and frail. Patrick Stewart's great, but I thought he was a, a an odd choice for um um for the voice of that particular character that he's playing. Um, let's see here. After I watched the movie, I tried to go online to find out, you know, a little bit more about it. And I was a little bit surprised to learn that it got some kind of mediocre reviews. Most of the critics really applauded the visuals, but they weren't that impressed with the story. Um, me personally, I feel this is like one of those movies that can be enjoyed by anyone. You know, children can like this movie, adolescents can like it, college students can like it, adults can like it. Everybody can have fun with this movie. You get to see. Um, you know, let's once again, of course, the, the, the animation, the visuals are great, but you get to kind of feel for Ray and his struggles, like I said, being torn between the left side, the right side, what he wants to do, uh, for his family versus what he thinks is good for, you know, uh, society and the greater good and everything like that. So I, I really had fun with it. Um, I think, I think it could have been maybe, I don't know, maybe if they market it more as a family movie or maybe as a, a mall type movie, you know what I mean, instead of just, you know, concentrating on these, you know, few limited theaters, maybe it would have had a better chance at succeeding. I, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, but definitely, you know, I would definitely recommend this movie to like anybody who's uh, interested in, you know, if you're a fan of animation, check it out. If you like science fiction and things like that, um, I don't know if this really qualifies as the kind of steampunk genre. I'm not too sure about that. But, you know, please, you know, check this movie out. Okay, and that's it. Uh, tell me what you think. Like I said, I'm kind of a newbie to the whole uh, um, anime genre. So, you know, please let me know if, you know, if you've seen it and, you know, what your perceptions were and stuff like that and anything else that um, you think I might enjoy. All right, thank you, and you have a great day.